Are you mentally prepared for your tennis matches? Well, if not, you should be, but don't worry. I've got the amazing Mark Pippen back with us today, and he's going to give us a lot of tips, so you don't want to miss any of them. Um, so Mark's back. He's a coach, he's a tennis player, and he's got a lot of good tips for you today. Once again, uh, hello and welcome, Mark. Good morning, Robert. Nice to see you. Hey, it's hey. good to see you too. Um, Mark, I know you have a tournament coming up, um, and I wanted to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of being mentally prepared for the tournament. Um, I know you probably are, but let's go back and to a time when you weren't. Can you remember a time when you weren't prepared for a tournament, and how did that turn out for you? Yeah, so in my early days, I, I would say I basically took no mental preparation. I would just you know, like prepare for a tournament the last second, pack my clothes, not have, I, you know, I did everything wrong, not have trained yeah. properly, maybe didn't go to the gym, uh, maybe had too many late nights that week. You know, I didn't realize everything that you do mm -hmm. adds up. Yeah. So if you get to bed early, if you eat right, if you drink lots of fluids, if you if you get to the tournament three days ahead of time for the the acclimatized, you know, to the difference in time zone. If you, yeah. you know, uh, if you show up without injuries, if you, you, you know, the, the, there's so many things and, and, and then get mentally focused, prepared for the tournament, you, you know, it all adds up. Yeah. And if, if you do one or two or three of these things wrong, you're going to walk on the court. You, you, you're, your, your mind is just going to wander all over the place. You're going to have a hard time focusing mm -hmm. on your match. So, so what I try and do now is, is I have this little mental checklist, you know, where I get everything right, make sure. Another big thing is you don't want a lot of drama in your life. Yes. The week running up to a tournament, you know, you don't want to have arguments with your best friends, get fired from work, uh, yeah. get thrown in jail. You know what I mean? You want, yeah. You want no drama, no negativity, do your training, eat right, drink right, fluids, train, get there early, and then you show up and then you're mentally prepared. And then uh, the example I was going to use once, I I went to play the Euro European Championship in Baden-Baden. Mm. It's like I didn't even look at my flights, I just booked it. And then, and then I realized, oh, I'm, I'm arriving at at 10:30 in the morning on a Monday, and oh my, my first match is at noon, one and a half <laughs> hours after I land, yeah. with with no sleep on the plane because it's a, an overnight flight plus jet lag. So I was mentally unprepared. Mm -hmm. I was scatterbrained, nervous on the plane. What am I going to do? I didn't even mentally think this out. I showed up, I nervous wreck, no sleep. Went to the hotel, you know, checked in. Went right to the courts without any food. Got there at 5 to 12, like just five minutes before my match. Yeah. And probably played, without a doubt, the worst match of my <laughs> ITF career against this German player. And, yeah, so yeah. so that was my wake-up call to, to get mentally prepared for tournaments. I think that's a great example of, for anybody watching, of um, what not to do. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. So did did you learn from that? Did you start um, well, preparing better uh, for future matches? Yeah, so I learned I learned uh, Robert to have what's called a mental checklist to, yeah. you know, make sure you get at the tournament three days ahead of time. You know, uh, get used to the time zone. Maybe to get used to the weather. Yeah. Uh, maybe practice a little bit with the courts. Uh, try to get relaxed. Try to have two or three good. Good night's sleep in the in the city that I'm going to, yeah. and uh, you know make sure I've got no drama in my life. Uh, that I'm not carrying any mental baggage going to the tournament. Uh, you know, just think about the present. Don't worry about the future, the match. Don't worry about the past. And uh, yeah, just just zone in on the tournament, focus, be ready, and, and then play well. Yeah. So as it's, it's a good idea for everybody watching then to have a mental checklist, um, especially if you've never done anything like that before. So I will go into that in more detail, Mark. There's something that you said there. Uh, 
let's say you've had an argument with your partner or a family member or, or as you said your boss is it good to really like have a clear the air talk about that and get it done and dusted before that you you go away and compete or so that it's not hanging over you yeah you've you've got to good point robert you've got to to resolve that conflict mm -hmm. before you step on the court there's no question if you're stepping on the court and you're worried that you're you know if i get the phone call my mother's in the hospital and oh my god i'm i'm so worried and and you walk on the court and you haven't resolved it in your mind or maybe you just got fired from your job two days before mm -hmm. you leave and it's and you're like what am i going to do now with my life like if you're walking on the court with any type of negative mental issue that's nagging you you're you're gonna have a very tough time yeah. winning that match especially against a very com a competitive player yeah, yeah you so have to clear clear the air yeah yeah so you've got to do as much as you can because if you're up against someone that is mentally prepared it, it makes such a difference especially if you're at the same level yeah yeah. Yeah. I'll, 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 Robert, I'll give you another example. Yeah. Uh, when I lived in Fredericton, I had a basement apartment. Mm -hmm. And so I had a tenant and I would fly to these tournaments, right? So one hour before my match, I'm 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 getting ready, I'm all prepared. I'm yeah. I, I know how I'm gonna play my opponent, I'm not nervous. And then I, I look at my phone and I get a text message from my tenant. It says, yeah. uh the bathtub's leaking; it needs to be fixed right away. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Like, what? like, <laughs> like I get, you know, like I'm just freaking out. How am I going to deal with this? I've got a match to play now. I've got to deal with this huge negative problem. So, and that, and it actually did happen once. So I've learned, I learned to to nip that in the bud. I had to hire one of my best buddies. Yeah. That if if uh, if something went wrong, he's not going to text me. He's going to phone my. My buddy back in Fredericton is going to deal with the problem. Yeah. Yeah, so, I think that's a good yeah. point. You know, if let's say you make a mental checklist and then sit, sit down and think, how could this go wrong? Yeah. You know, and be, be yeah. prepared for what could go wrong, like someone calling an emergency, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we need, at certain times, we need our phones on. If there's a family member that's not well or something, you, yeah. want, you want to know about it. But yeah For those other distractions like tenants um you just don't need it i know and yeah. uh, uh and i basically told i tell my friends that you know when i when i'm on the road you know i i really don't want to be contacted i i, I want to just focus on the term just contact me if it's something urgent or yeah. really important you know i don't want to be texting oh hi donnie what you know oh, that's nice you took the dog for a walk well yeah. okay you know i I, I, I tell my friends, I don't want to deal with that. I, I, I'm there at the tournament. I don't want to be disturbed. Yeah. I want to just focus on my matches. Yeah, so so, so that's another mental checklist for me, just just uh, not to be disturbed unless it's an absolute emergency. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. this your checklist, do you have like a pre-game pre routine that you religiously do every tournament or every match? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, at these ITF tournaments, uh, more than likely, I would have a, a morning match at nine o'clock, maybe 10, 10 a.m. So I learn to have my breakfast two hours before. So if I have a match at nine, I'm going to eat at seven. Yeah. And I'll be careful what I eat. I'm going to drink, you know, water, mm -hmm. uh, maybe take some vitamins. Uh, uh, and, you know, and I'm not going to overeat. I'm going to watch what I eat. And right after that, I'm going to stretch and, and maybe do do some light weights some skipping rope, something like that. And then to clear my mind, I like what works for me is I like going for a walk by myself yeah. and say I'll, I'll walk along the water, just focus on what I'm looking at, not worrying about the match. That's that's yeah. the key thing on, on mental conditioning mental toughness i don't want to be walking around half an hour thinking oh geez you know oh, i'm really nervous this guy's really good and then you walk on the court and then you're twice as nervous so i'm just enjoying the moment because the night before 
I've already g gone on in my mind how I'm going to beat this guy. Yes. So that's already been taken care of. So the morning of the match, I'm just focusing on uh, what I'm looking at with my eyes in the present from walk taking a walk along the river. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to get to the court. If I have a match at 9. I'm going to get there at 8.30, check in, and then uh, go to the court, relax, you know, keep my, still keep my mind on the present. Then my match is going to get called. Then I'm going to walk on the court, uh, yeah. check my bag, make sure I've got everything, my water, my wristband, my cap, do the five-minute warm-up, and then start the match. You're good to yeah. go. You're good to go. And what, and what are you looking at at this, the very start of the match? Your, your, I'm thinking of your mental attitude. How do you, do you know after the first couple of balls if you're going to have a good match or... Yeah. Do you just get a feeling yeah. feeling around that? Yeah, and 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 the way the way you get that feeling is uh, during the five minute warm up, which is absolutely crucial because during the five minute warm up, I I can pretty well tell if I'm gonna either win the match very easy mm. or or lose very badly because <laughs> yeah. this guy's just unbelievable. Or oh, I'm in for a long three four hour match. And I could either win it or lose it. Yeah. And out of the three, that's the toughest one to deal with mentally. Because if I'm if I'm gonna win six love, six one, I can probably get away with uh, as I'm hitting the ball, thinking about okay, I think I'll have a beer tonight at six thirty. <laughs> I won't be concentrating that hard. Yeah. Or if I'm losing really bad, you know, if I have no chance, then I'm not gonna be too worried about my mental toughness because the guy's so much better. But where it gets tough is when you know during the warm up your strokes are equal. So you, so so what happens when you're in the five minute warm up and you're noticing that your opponent is is just as good as you? Mm -hmm. th then what's going to carry you through that match is your mental toughness. So in other words, the desire to win every point, the desire to to do that drop shot, to run harder than that. Yeah. You know the mental. Mental, you know, me mental toughness in tennis, 80% versus physical. So that's that's where mental toughness conditioning comes in yeah. when you're playing that those long three, four hour matches and you have that desire and focus. Yeah, what I've noticed is that the top, top players, they're able to kind of dig in the trench even if they're not playing well. And yeah, everything seems to be able to change in a couple of shots. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because um, yeah. and and, a and what back. a great player can do, as opposed to a normal regular player, is on the big points they can up their level to the next level to win that point to yeah. win the match. That's what great that's what great players do when yeah. you watch the pros on TV like Nadal, Federer. Yeah. They they can hit these unbelievable shots at 40, 30, like to to win the game. Like like it's like they they've ele elevated their game mentally to that next level because they, they, they want to win that point which yeah. wins that game which means they'll, they'll win the match yeah yeah I've, I've seen players they seem to if they're ahead they kind of play it safe they play the percentage shots but as you say you know the the top top players they're, they're like fearless to play these shots that are yeah. you know if they miss it they're out but they seem to be able to pull it off as you say in the, in those moments the big pressure moments um, because they're, exactly, they're not exactly. afraid. They're, they're not afraid of losing somehow. Yeah, you know. the the great players play play to win. So they they, they will be fearless. Yeah. And and they'll go for it and play to win. The average player doesn't want to lose, so they're playing not to lose. Yeah. So so they they're, they're going to purposely not hit five backhand hard balls in a row. They'll just get it back to play safe. So that's the difference between a, a great player. Yeah and a regular player the, the great player will pound that ball at 40 30 to win that point okay hey, i don't care if they're if they're really good really bad i'd rather walk on during the five minute warm-up have no expectations no negative yeah. or extra positive feelings just feel it out for the warm-up get a good idea there and yeah. and then and then take it from there and for me for me that that's worked i've had i've had my best wins not knowing who I, who who have beaten, in other words, how good they were. Yeah, yeah. So it's just yeah. take take it, 
as you say, when you go for the walk, you're in the present moment, and then it's the same when you turn up for the match. It's just in the moment, not thinking too far ahead. Yeah. 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 I'd, ra I'd rather, you know, I'll, I'll obviously look up the guy. Like, I, I have to know the name of the player that I'm playing. So, so it's going to be one of two things. It's going to be someone I've never played before. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, I will never look him up. Yeah. And if it's someone, well, if it's someone that I've played seven times, well, yeah, I, I kind of know already how the match is going to be played out in my mind. So yeah. I know that if I've beaten him seven straight times, it's looking pretty good that I'm going to beat him eight straight times. So I tend not to worry. Yeah. You know, if it's one of those matches, uh, one of those players where, you know, I've beaten him twice, he's beaten me twice. Well, I know that I'm going to be in for another three, four hour battle and I better be mentally tough. If mm -hmm. the guy's ranked number one in the world and I have no choice, no chance, well, then okay, then maybe I'll play loose, I'll have some fun, I'll try some different strategies, you know, but I'm not going to worry about it either. Yeah. yeah, is that is that kind of a relief sometimes? You just know you're totally outclassed and it's like there's, there's no pressure because you're not expecting to win anyway? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. then do you try different things then? Do you try to play your normal game or do you try new things thinking at least if I get a, a few points? Yeah, um, very, very good question, Robert. So, and, I, and, and I've played really good players and with just my regular game and I got beat real bad. Yeah. So I thought, well, that's not going to work. Yeah. So, so if, if you're going to play a really good player, like say number one in the world yeah. and you know, you're going to get beat love and one, well, <laughs> then he, the best thing to do is try different things, try new tactics, try, you know, yeah. And, and you, you might get a better result might not beat them, but instead of losing love and one, yeah. you might lose two and three. So, yeah. so what I've learned is against the really top players, you, you got to step out of your comfort zone and do something different to try and beat them. Yeah, yeah. no question. Yeah, I know it's easy for me to sit here and say, but you know sometimes you've got to look at these people and think, well, they're they're human, they're f flesh and bone, the same as yeah. everybody else. Um, yeah. But it's going back to the start. It's that mental preparation. Um, you know, who puts the most preparation in before the, yeah. the tournament as well exactly and yeah. Robert what can happen and it happened to me once uh, when I was playing a tournament in Croatia I was playing number 10 in the world in singles mm -hmm. and you know I thought oh geez I have no chance with this guy he's, he's so good yeah. like wow but you know it's not like I walked on the court and gave up I thought okay I'm going to try different things yeah. and I did and I pulled an upset. He had a bad day, and I beat him. So, you, you know, even though they, they're better than you, once in a while you can beat these guys. If, if you're trying different things and it's working, and they're and com combined with the fact that they're having a bad day, then yeah. that's where you get the upsets. That's where that can happen. Yeah, yeah I think it's just being prepared for those moments because it inevit inevitably does happen because, as you said before, we don't know. They might be really mentally prepared. They might be good players, but they might get a phone call that would upset them before a match. You know that a call that they've had to take, and that just kind of throws their their game, their focus, uh, as well. And you've got to be prepared yeah. to pounce to pounce on that. If yeah, you, if you're ready. Yeah, good point, Robert. I mean, you know, the the big thing that I've run in that I've run into, especially in the early morning matches, is what's important is how well you slept the night before. Mm. So if I sleep really well, I get a good night's sleep, yeah. then I'll, I'll know I'll be wide awake, focused, mental energy for my tough three-hour match. If, if if my opponent, you know, has been up all night, you know, getting up every two hours, couldn't fall asleep, yeah. he's going to show up mentally exhausted, tired. It's going to show in his, in his game. And, yeah. you know, no, no one's ever going to walk on the court and say, you know, Mark, I didn't sleep at all last night. You know, they, but they will tell me after the match. They will say, mm -hmm. you know, you beat me, Mark, but geez, you know, I, I, I hardly slept. So, so, you know, they're, they're just being very honest. And so that, that that's another key factor in mental preparation, a good night's sleep. Uh, I totally, very, couldn't very agree on it anymore, Mark, uh, because you can do all the mental things right. And if you don't get that good night's sleep, 
it, it's pointless. So, um, <laughs> is there anything yeah. that you would take for that? Some like something natural, like a like a chamomile tea or something, just to help you. Yeah, get, chamomile get tea or melatonin. I would take. I, I would. Yeah. Ne- I'll never do the, uh, you know, the prescription drugs because no. uh, uh, I, I had a friend once take one of those sleeping pills and he got up and he, he was just too groggy. It's, it's like he didn't snap out of the, yeah. he walked down the court and he, he lost the mat. Matter of fact, he, he didn't even finish the match. He was so sleepy. He just, and then, and then, yeah. he, and then it started to play on mentally on him and he just walked off the court. So yeah, I, I'm just too scared yeah. to go that route. So I, I will go naturally, but I, I I've learned that, you don't eat a heavy meal late. Yeah. You don't eat spicy food late. Yeah. And, you know, you, you try to get to bed at your normal hour. That's the other key. So so my normal hour is 11 o'clock at night. Well, I'm not going to go to bed at 9 because I won't fall asleep till 11. So there's no point. I don't want to be yeah. up till 1 because I'll be really tired and be really tired in the morning. So so with sleep, just just go you know, if you're used to going to bed at nine, then mm. go to bed at nine. For me, it's eleven. Someone else, it might be midnight. So, so you want to keep everything the same yeah. the week of the tournament. You don't want to change your going to bed bedtime. Yeah. It's definitely about routine then, having a good mental toughness routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. What I was thinking there as well, uh, Mark. How important as part of your mental toughness routine? is physical and mental energy you know how do you get that to peak just at the right moment well yeah the the, the mental and the physical go together because yeah. if you're nervous and you're exhausted you didn't get any sleep you're so worried that you're going to lose this match it drains you so physically you're going to be exhausted running after that ball yeah. So it's the mental is huge. It's, it's, it's more, well, it's just as equal as the physical because you don't want to walk on the court and have an injury and then you're going to lose because you can't run yeah. because you've got a sore hip. So that, so they're both very important, but the, the, the mental affects the physical. If you're stressed out, you know, if you've had no sleep, you're worried about that, that your boss is going to fire you or something, uh, it's, it's, it's going to drain you mentally what drains you physically so yeah. that's one thing i've learned you've got to have the mental energy to have the physical energy no question yeah 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 um and it, you we were talking about getting enough sleep let's say you don't get enough sleep like the time you, you didn't really oh. sleep on the plane yeah. what yeah do you are you are you tempted to like drink gallons of coffee then to keep kind of keep you stimulated or is that a bad no. move no, because coffee will bring you up high and then you crash. I've learned you crash, yeah. you crash even lower. So, you know, if I've had no sleep, there's not much you can, you, you just got to suck it up and try your best. And uh, two things are going to happen. Either during the match, you're going to snap out of it and get all your energy back, which yeah. will give you enough physical energy to win the match. Or you're going to be groggy, half asleep no energy and lose the match. So yeah. there's not much you can do when, you know, you're just mentally drained from a lack of sleep or would, some other problem. Yeah. Would, you, would you get away with it if you were a lot, if you were a lot of, a lot better than your opponent? Um, could you kind of yeah. get away with it? And then yes. once you win a couple of games, is that kind of, the energy come then because it's, it stimulates you naturally. Yeah, you can get away with no with a and and I have an example of this. You can get away with with no sleep, and if you're way better than your opponent and win the match. So I'll give you one example. I was playing a tournament in Montreal, mm-hmm. which ended on a Sunday, and I was gonna go to Halifax. Uh, and play a tournament which started on a Monday, but I was hoping that my match would be scheduled at four in the afternoon. You know, my buddy and I were going to drive 18 hours in a car, you know, maybe sleep in a hotel for four or five hours and then 
go, you know, go play the match. So here's what happened. They scheduled my match for 9 a.m. in Halifax. Mm -hmm. And we had an 18-hour drive. What that meant, Robert, is we had to drive nonstop, yeah. maybe stop once or twice for gas, no, zero sleep, show up at 8.30, well, actually, it was 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, in Halifax and with no sleep because we were driving all night, and, and I had to play my match with no sleep. And like I had no energy, I could hardly think straight. I remember I would I would play the couple points and I couldn't even remember what the score was. But thank God the guy was so bad. I won the match just barely. But yeah, that can happen. But I would have never gotten away with it yeah. against a decent player. It's not it's not recommended anyway. <laughs> oh, not at all. Yeah. 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 I mean, it makes yeah. for a good story, but uh, it's yeah. not, not recommended. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like I, I will meditate. Number mm -hmm. one, I have a CD that yeah. I, that I, that I bring, that I listen to, that I, Good. you know, if I need that. And yeah, I'm very grateful. I mean, I'm heading in the end of this tournament to Mexico City on Friday, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna, have, you know, I've been injured for two weeks, so I'm gonna have a hit this afternoon. And if I, you know, if I'm able to hit and play, I'm, I'm gonna be extremely grateful. Yeah. And it's gonna calm me and. Uh, yeah, spiritually and uh, yeah, like for me, I'm just grateful to be alive. Grateful if yeah. I, if I can, you know, uh, show up not injured, then you know that's even better. So yeah, yeah being grateful, uh, yeah, that does help for sure. Yeah. And I'll just uh, uh, just one more question: Are you are you mentally okay. prepared for this latest tournament? Okay, so I'm I'm mentally prepared as I can be. I'm not worried worried about it. Mm -hmm. I'm focused. I'm already packed. My suitcase is ready. Uh, I just nor, normally I don't go in a tournament uh, with an injury. So, so you know, I have a week before my first match. So I'm going to hit this afternoon, and if it goes well, then it's going to lift my spirits. I'll be even more mentally prepared. Yeah. If I'm struggling to move, well, I still got five more days, you know, before I hop on the plane. So. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, for, for my hit this afternoon, it's it's a big mental step. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Okay, well, we're gonna end it there. But if you like this video, uh, watch Mark's other videos. Um, I'll put them up for you. And please like and subscribe and give us some support as well. And good luck for the tournament, Mark. I wish you well. Thank you very much, Robert. Thanks for watching and thanks to Mark. And if you like Mark's videos, Watch this one coming up right here. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate the support. And talk soon. Bye.